Moving on, I'd like to recall the video of Nigeria's first lady, Senator Luremi Tinubu, which, uh, which went viral in, recent, in the recent past. Uh, let's see if, let, let's see a bit of that video and then we can move forward. Well, I'm sure a lot of Nigerians are familiar with the issues that that video generated, but the First Lady isn't my major focus. My concerns are primarily on the workability of home gardening or kitchen gardening, you know, as a basic unit of food security, especially for families, average families. And of course, uh, you know, at a time like this, you know, in this time and age, even more recently, where goods and, you know, the prices of food are expensive and, uh, you know, the purchasing power is reducing, it is becoming increasingly attractive to at least know where your food is coming from or even the fact that, you know, you'd have something to eat in the first place. Well, why some say home gardening could help fill that hunger gap, there are germane questions revolving around the practice and sustainability of home, home gardening and you know to what extent uh, or the extent to which it, it can actually contribute to closing the hunger gap in the land. Uh, in talking about the prospects and challenges in this regard, let me bring in my guest analyst, Omolara Vincent, a National Coordinator Nigerian Women for Agricultural Progress. I'd like to welcome you, ma'am, to the program. Welcome to Insight. Thank you for having me. I guess we should just jump right into it. And I'd like to ask you if you're convinced that home gardening could well suffice as a good complement to providing what an average family may require as food. You know, how compartmentalized would such a garden need to be or would be? And, you know, for it to be able to meet the needs of an average family, maybe say 5 to 10 percent requirements of an average family's food needs. You know, with such a garden, you know, at that point, perhaps need to measure up to the dominant standard of agricultural production, like access to land, access to water, maybe seeds as well, in order for it to be of any benefit to the average family. Well, thank you once again for having me here. For the first thing I'll say is there are two types of farming or agriculture. So there is farming and then there is agribusiness. What we're discussing here today is farming to feed yourself. Yes. So I do not buy most of the staple foods in the market because I grow them in my home. And because, for a fact? Yes, for a fact. So I don't buy a widu and I consume a lot of a widu. I don't buy okra. I don't buy pepper except if I'm having a, um, guests that is more than five, ten people. Hmm. You know, I don't buy um, cucumber, um, I don't buy saint leaf, I don't buy um, bitter leaf. So yes, you can cultivate to a very large extent, you can cultivate staple foods that you consume. Regardless, either you have a lot of land behind in your house that is available to you, or you are planting in uh, sacks, uh, flower pots, buckets, or what have you. My cucumber is grown in sacks and buckets, and then I do the, uh, the stakes on my fence. You know, so you can, every Nigerian can grow most of the staple food that they consume, especially some of us that has the luxury of having uh, space in our compound. So when we look at home gardening for what we consume, yes, mm. it is doable and it is advisable that every single one of us should try to cultivate to a large extent what we consume on a daily basis. You know, when you say you, you, you plant or you grow the bulk of what you consume, mm. uh, the first thing that entered my mind is that she probably has a lot of space, no, you know, plenty of space in her compound. Or maybe she, it's possible she even owns where she lives. She owns her home. Mm. And so she's in control. So I know for instance, well, for a fact that hunger isn't pecu uh, peculiar to any particular region. Mm -mm. But I do know that it impacts uh, more on, you know, on, on person, on, um, on um, um, what's it called? There are structures, rather. Yeah. Uh, the way it impacts a rich man, for instance, hunger, mm. mm. uh, and he can easily fill his needs with his money, is not mm. the same way it impacts uh, somebody who um, falls below perhaps the poverty line, line. or something. So yeah. it, it, it depends on economic classifications. Mm. Mm. Uh, with that in mind, uh, could we then rationalize that home gardening 
can be perceived from different perspectives. For instance, from the urban and rural perspective, the way the uh, rural dwellers perhaps can have space and time to farm uh, is not the same way somebody in the city or city center may be able to do that. There's also another perspective I'd like for you to talk about, the property owner and then the tenantship or the tenant's perspective, even in a semi-urban or you know, urban area. Isn't it possible that these perspectives can impact home, gar home gardening? Well, um, agriculture is evolving like every other thing in the world is right now. So I, it, does, it doesn't really matter whether you are in the urban settlement or you rent a, you're renting a flat or you're renting an apartment or you, the building you live in does not belong to you. All you need is have even something as basic as a plastic bag, depending on what you're cultivating. So if you have spaces where you have flower pots in your balcony or in your living room, you have enough space to cultivate the chili pepper rodo that you and your children will, will consume that it's as basic as that if you have enough space where you can pack a car that is for yourself then you have space for three four five six flower pots that can actually cultivate your um ugu which you then stack on the wall on the fence or cultivate your a four green so it doesn't matter if you need the landlord's permission to do all of that you should do you need a landlord permission to have a flower pot in your balcony it's movable. I mean, it's not like you're digging into the landlord's concrete stamping or, or the, the tiles they've put in the compound. You're cultivating in a mobile device. So you're cultivating in a, in a sack. Smart, smart gardening. Smart like, gardening, like yes. Like the first the, the world said, is, yeah. the, world is, the world is evolving. So you have no... I remember while I was living outside Nigeria. In my kitchen, I have these small um, um, brownish-looking flower pots where... I had planted my rodo, my uh, saint leaf, you know, because of course, Nigerian, I'm a Yoruba woman, I have to have my food spicy. And yes. I found that the, 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 the saint leaf that I get in the so-called African shops would have lost a lot, the, uh, the, 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 the saint leaf, the saint in it. The flavor so that you The want. flavor in it. So yeah. I, I cultivate all of these things. And then I was living in one of the coldest regions in the world. So I cultivated my saint leaf in my kitchen, you know. So there is no excuse for ev anyone not to. It may not be enough, but I mean, imagine you want to fry eggs for Sunday breakfast and you're a family of six and you need four tomatoes and maybe two rodo. And you can get that from your flower pot in your balcony. But these four tomatoes or six tomatoes that I just called now is about 2,000 naira in the market. You know, so whoever, that, that person that is, I mean, as the, while I was the, um, um, then it was called woman leader. When mm -hmm. I was the woman leader for the Oyo State chapter of um, uh, uh, Farmers Association, um, I remember vividly that I, I personally invested uh, some millions of naira in my women to cultivate and focus on vegetables. And... In the locality that year, a particular vegetable that is known to be expensive during dry season wasn't as expensive as it we predicted. You know, because every single one of my women planted shoko, a four green, a wedu, ila, mm. and there was more than enough. I mean, they sent to me about to my neighbors. So there is no excuse for you not to at least, no matter how little, cultivate what you consume the problem we have in nigeria which i i'd like to talk about Please. all the time is that we have you know crude oil is as much as a blessing a curse to us as a nation because if we take it back a little bit imagine just imagine that as we have cocoa house in ibadan we have cocoa houses in all the southwest regions like that we have cashew hospital right we have peanuts medical center we have um share butter university where i'm i'm saying we have universities we are built from the proceeds of exporting share butter because these are all cash crops that we have had in this country for as long as this country existed mm. but because of the discovery of crude oil all attention was shifted away from agriculture and that's why someone like my grandfather did not encourage me with the love i had for agriculture because even though we were cultivating as a child most of the food we consume in our house to the livestock that we consume growing up, we were rearing them in our house 
me growing up. But True. my grandfather, he, t he called everyone, this is what you are studying. He wanted me to be a medical doctor. And I was always failing physics, <laughs> you know. But, but because discovery of crude oil changed our priority as a nation. So agriculture has been neglected for so long. Nobody even was thinking or in the line that the existence and sustenance of human race is fully dependent on agriculture. Mm. Because what, why shouldn't you, especially those of us that has the space that owns our buildings. Take advantage of to, this space. Why could you not take up? Why would I not know where my tomato you know, is coming you, from? Where, where, you know? Exactly. When I talked I about... Mean, I buy... The, I hear that some people do buy uh, um, uh, fruits and then it's... Um, the fruits that they bought, it's tasting funny or it's taking forever for their plantain to get ripe because it's been... They've applied chemicals on it. And I'm like, why would you not... Why would this not be a, a major concern mm. For anyone, especially in this day and age where cancer has become one, uh, one cobble, you know, it's everywhere you go. So it is our primary uh, um, a responsibility as a person is not only for you to prov produce what you eat, but at least to have traceability. I do a lot of commodity export. Yes. And one of the major things in the advanced country that you have to tick when you're signing the contract to move our soya, our corn, or what have you outside Nigeria is traceability. So, and you think, oh, it's the government that is doing it. No, as a person, shouldn't you be bothered about where what you are consuming is coming from? After all, food is medicine. It is when we fail in that regard that that our food medicine becomes the food. You know. So these are all the things that it it boils down to our orientation. True. And I say it all the time. The National Orientation Agency has a lot of work to do with the Ministry of Agri. Our orientation as a Nigerian, myself inclusive, needs to change. We have to reprioritize our priority, you know. And by so doing, you will see to it yourself that, I mean, I, I have a lot of my women that do not understand why anyone will go into a supermarket and buy vegetables that has been <laughs> in the fridge for a couple of days. Because they, they will tell you, ah, my national uh, president, it, you know, go taste the same. Those are the people that are living a good life. And, and, and I understand that totally. And, you know, when you talked about your grandfather wanting you to be a doctor, <laughs> I mean, now you're a farmer. Yeah. And, and if he's still alive, I'm pretty sure he's proud of you. If he's not, he's wherever he is, I'm sure. He he's was still, proud of me before yes. he passed. And my Wonderful. Too. Great. Yeah. You know, growing up myself, my paternal grandmother lived with us. So I remember so vividly a vegetable garden just behind the kitchen there. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, I tell you something, it was quite, I mean, it was quite something. So uh, when I get, so I get it when advocates like you say home gardening, you know, besides all of the advantages that you've enumerated, it also makes economic sense. But, you know, women like your grandfather, uh, sorry, women, men like your grandfather interested in, you know, in in welfare or their children's welfare and trying to trace the trace and trying to know the origin of their food and women like my own grandmother, mm. you know, they they had plenty of time on their hands. Mm. Uh, my grandmother, for instance, was a stay-at-home <coughs> caregiver who looked after us, basically the grandkids. So she had plenty of time on her hands to tend the garden. But these days, you know, people easily lose inspiration. If and when, maybe for instance, their plants do not grow well, or they are attacked by a pest and diseased. So let, let me just ask you this. How much knowledge then is considered enough for gardening, for home gardening? Well, if you have the time to wake up in the morning and check headlines on Instagram, Twitter, uh, what's the other one my son does? Um, <laughs> that one they play on. TikTok. Uh, TikTok. Yeah, if you have time, if you spend minimum of 30 minutes on any social media platform a day, you have enough time to tend to your staple crops in the house. That is one. Secondly, when you bought Isayedero, sorry, I don't know how to say that in English. Um, uh, try, try, try. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people... Um, uh, technology has made life easier for us. Okay. So that same time you're using to check your celebrities on social media, go on YouTube channel, visit our own page, Nigerian Women for Agricultural Progressive okay. and, Initiative, and Development Initiative. We post tips. We're about to launch our magazine where we post tips, you know, and write about how you can cultivate basic crops in the house. So 
And like I said earlier, priority. If you prioritize it, no matter how busy you are, you will make out time for it. Earlier on, I talked about how it does make economic sense uh, in some way and, you know, instills this sense of empowerment and mm. self-reliance. You know, if we're talking in terms of advantages, uh, perhaps, uh, what more advantages do you think or, you know, besides, you know, the uh, economic advantage it gives to a family, maybe an average family? Uh, and I, I know, like I referenced my grandma earlier and I do still remember that she could use, she practiced the multi-cropping system. She mm. had vegetables, she had, you know, some staples as well mm. and they, she was, she tended to them and it, it made sense. So uh, let's just put that quickly together in terms of advantages and then um, you tell us how substantially home gardening can, you know, in also provide nutritious requirements for families on a continual basis, if well managed, in addition to other advantages uh, therein. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, it's very simple. Let's put it this way. If there are 1,000 families that buys their morning vegetables from Utako Market every Sunday, and um, 500 out of this 1,000 family now has there are six, ten tomatoes in their garden. Mm. There was an incident that happened in some part of the country during this tomato rise in price in the past one month. So the villagers heard that a, a basket of tomatoes in Abuja was being sold for X amount. So a basket of tomatoes, they normally sell for 10,000. They now called it 40,000. So the villagers decided not to buy from the market and they were taken from each other. It, it, it was within a week that the markets, you know, everything has association these days in Nigeria. Before they called themselves to order mm. and said, come, in short, now we will sell for 8,000 because their tomatoes were going bad, you know. So it, it, it reduces the pressure on the market to start with. And it helps you. We're talking from the family end now. Yes. It helps you. Imagine if every Sunday you spend on the average 5,000 naira on um, um, pepper. You know, I mean, tomato, pepper, what have you, as a family. But then you are using just two or 1,000 naira to cultivate that same amount of tomatoes. You con so in a month, you're spending like 20,000. And it will cost you like 5,000 to cultivate this for the next three months. So at the long run, when you do the maths, you as a, as a family, as a home, you're saving a lot of money. That is one. Secondly, new trends. Yes. New trends. A, a tomato that I cultivate on my 10 hectares of land would definitely have to have a lot of fertilizers in it. There is no rocket science to that. There is no magic I can do to that because it is now agribusiness. And I want the maximum yield my land can give to me. So you have no control over that. It is agribusiness, agricultural business. It's different from you in the house that all you need is a seed or some seed from the tomatoes you have just bought in the market and you just need to replant it, you know? So it has a lot of advantage when it comes to the nutrients in what you consume as well. So I would say I grew up um, with this mentality. Mm. As an adult, I've also lived this uh, uh, reality and I'm still living this reality. And we have been saying it so in the agricultural sector. So, gardening is not a waste of no, time. No, it's not a waste of time. It's a priority. It's one of the things that we should prioritize as individuals, as citizens, as Nigerians. And there is no excuse for it anymore. Only both is why there are technology had made things easier. You can cultivate <laughs> anywhere in the world you are. Either you are renting a, a fa you are in a face me I slap you, or you are in a three bedroom flat, or you are in a five bedroom duplex True. with a lot of garden or not, as long as you can have a space to put uh, a it flower doesn't, It doesn't matter if you're very rich or you're, or very, you're very poor. poor. In short, it's it, could be, it could be for fun, it could be for leisure. Yeah, Nigeria is so blessed that if you, like if you go to some parts of Nigeria where they're blending pepper, tomatoes and pepper grows from yeah. where they throw True. the dead water from the grinding of the I've pepper. This is how blessed we are as a, as a nation. I mean, you see a ground that is being cemented and there's a crack in it, and then you see that uh, 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 fruit or crops is growing in between the crack. What else do we want? That's why I say all the time that it's a big shame on every single one of us that as a Nigerian, as blessed as we are as a nation, we are 
in a situation of food insecurity. A nation whereby all the nations are coming to steal our soil to take to their country so they can cultivate a nutrient, uh, 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 nutritious uh, uh, um, farm produce. Omolara Venson, the National Coordinator of Nigerian Women for Agricultural Progress. Uh, we do appreciate your analysis. You. I would like to thank you so much for coming on our program on Insight to speak about this matter. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. God bless Nigeria. Uh, time now to take